Hailing viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Seeing Red by Frank Bedore. This is the second book in the Looking Glass Wars series. The first book is called The Looking Glass Wars, and I have already reviewed that, and I will post a link to that in the description below. I've also already read and reviewed the prequels to this, which are the Hatter Madigan graphic novels and Hatter Madigan Ghost in the Hat Box, and I will post a link to those reviews in the description below also. I've got to say that I am not digging The Looking Glass Wars as much as I did the stuff before it, though. Like, I really love the graphic novels, and I think Ghost in the Hat Box is so amazing. These are kind of letting me down a bit. This world that these books exist in is Wonderland. It's the Wonderland of Lewis Carroll's novel, except it's not. Um, Lewis Carroll kind of heard Alice Hart talk about it, and he made up his own version of what Wonderland is like. And the Wonderland we're dealing with in these books are so much darker and such a mess. And it's so much more complicated. And there's so much more fighting and battles and political stuff happening. So the first book in the series, Alice became a queen of Wonderland. She managed to overthrow her Aunt Red, who was the Queen of Hearts, the Red Queen, the evil one. And her aunt escaped, and there's this looming threat. So Alice is trying to stabilize Wonderland and have her rule and be in charge and try to shape everything. And Alice aligns with white imagination, which is kind of this good magic. And her aunt, who was in charge for like 13 years, had an affinity for dark imagination which is like ba bad magic. And so everything in Wonderland is this mess and Alice is trying to fix it and trying to bring it back to what happened when her mother was in charge, when white imagination ruled and everybody kind of had freedom. But Aunt Red, the evil queen, she has escaped. She hasn't exactly been vanquished. And so there's this looming threat that she's going to come back. And there are people in Wonderland who having red in charge it was working out great for them you know the seedy parts of society the darker things people who use black imagination having red in charge was great and so even though alice is in charge now there's still this faction within wonderland who would rather not have alice on the throne um, so it's interesting trying to see alice fix wonderland there's been this massive war there has been 13 years of chaos and darkness and trying to rebuild everything. Like Alice's childhood home got completely wiped out. Um, so she's got to build a new palace. Um, all kinds of political things happening. And then we've also got this third entity, um, the King of the Borderlands, Arch, who um, kind of would like Wonderland to be in chaos. And Arch is also an interesting character because he's a complete and total misogynist. He thinks women should not rule and Wonderland is a queendom. There is always a woman in charge. So Arch is not really digging that. He would love, if nothing else, to see Red back in charge because he's kind of a darker character too. And he like did better with Red. Like they weren't really allies, but they weren't like messing with each other. And now that Alice is in the throne, he kind of sees his chance to take over Wonderland. And that's kind of He's trying to create this, this doubt. He's feeding the doubt and the darker parts of society that are resisting Alice. So that's happening in this book too. Like there's tons of political stuff happening and tons of fighting. And we definitely get to see imagination, especially like war functioning imagination, like building bombs and weapons and stuff and actual like combat, which honestly is not my favorite favorite. Like I was really interested in the imagination at the beginning of book one when her mom was in charge and seeing everybody creating things like that was fascinating to me but like Red being in charge, Arch's form of like subterfuge is not my favorite and so much of this book was focused on that. Um, there is a romance in here between Alice and her childhood friend Dodge who is not one of the palace guards and it's, they both like each other, but the fact that he's the guard and she's the queen complicates things. Um, 
and Alice, you know, is supposed to marry a noble. Specifically, she was supposed to mad- marry Jack of Diamonds, who is kind of a jerk and betrayed her. So that's not happening now. Also, everything with Jack is just interesting and a mess also. Um, most of the story takes place in Wonderland, although Red escapes into our world and starts causing chaos and trying to get allies. So we do get to see Earth, um, like our world, but it's... N- we're not following the same characters that Alice was. We're not in the same places. And the cat is just as terrifying as I remembered from book one. Uh, he's really not my favorite. Um, this paperback edition also has pictures. So like there's Arch and his many wives because he's a total misogynist. Obviously can't just marry one woman. It's got a harem going on there. There's the cat. The cat is so freaking scary in these books. Um... I mean, it's cool that he's terrifying and he's well designed that way, but also I don't like him. Like, I, I know him well enough to hate him, at least, I guess is what I can say. Kind of despise him. There's also a storyline in here with, with um, Humberg Molly, who was Alice's bodyguard. But she's like a teenager, like 13 or 14 or something, and not sure of herself. And she's always second guessing herself. And that becomes a big part of this book also. Like, I, I thought she was so much more interesting in book one. And I have to keep reminding myself that she's only like 13 or 14 in that um because as the queen's bodyguard kind of expecting her to be older but she's not um but the thing that she's most worried about is the fact that she's this halfer she's half millinery half not and so she doesn't really fit as a civilian and she doesn't really fit as part of the military um and she feels out of place and she feels like she shouldn't be trusted and that alice could have a better bodyguard um Hatter also makes a reappearance in this book. He's kind of gone off on sabbatical for a bit. He had to get his head wrapped around some things that happened. The 13 years that he was chasing um, Alice through our world while Red was in charge. And now he's back in Wonderland trying to center himself and catch up and tie up loose ends. So loved Hatter in this. Um, There is a bit in here where like maybe we trust Hatter, Hatter. Maybe we don't. But because I had read the prequels that mostly focus on Hatter, I kind of never felt like I couldn't trust Hatter because I know him better than any other character in the series. There was enough in here to keep me reading this and I am definitely going to read Arch Enemy and finish the series, but I didn't like it that much. I didn't like it as much as book one. Um, There's kind of just too much fighting and political stuff for my taste to really get into the series. Um... I always kind of expect Wonderland to be a bit more light and interesting, and it doesn't happen in the series. So I only ended up giving this book three stars. So it's all right, but it's not my favorite. I think there's better stuff out there and even better things in this series. Like, I love Ghost in the Hat Box. That book's amazing. And so I think my expectations are too high because the other books are better. I don't know. So it'll be interesting to see how this series this trilogy concludes um and i'll definitely post that review once i finish it unless you guys know what i thought of it let me know in the comments below if you've read seeing red or the rest of the looking glass series and what you think of it and totally if you haven't already check out the review for the other books yeah Blah. my brain i'm not focusing sorry um anyway peace out i love you guys i keep reading bye